Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, grading a famous green tea. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Bilochen, a very famous green tea from China. And I am going to be giving you my tips on how to hunt out the best tea for your collection. This video is gonna go under the Tea Masterclasses playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, go click that button. Bilo Chen, also known as Jade Green Snail of Spring, or some variation of that, is one of the most famous green teas in China. You can find it everywhere. However, it is a very elusive tea. And what I mean by that is it's hard to find the good stuff. There are many, many low to medium grades out there. And with this type of tea, with Bilo Chen, if you don't get top quality, you really taste it in the cup. It's a very pernickety tea. Anything other than top quality and it's really not worth the price. And it reminds me a little bit of Jade Sword or Angie Bai Cha, of which I did a video before, I'll put a link in the description below. And that tea, just like this tea, has a kind of snob value. Uh, it's, it's an expensive tea, it's a very expensive Chinese green tea, but even the medium to low grades command a high price and the difference is huge. So what I wanted to do today is give you some tips, both visual and also in what you can expect in the tea experience so that you can find the best Bilo Chen for your collection. Let's start with a little bit of history. Bilo Chen, is an old tea, it comes from the Tang Dynasty. It used to be called Xia Xia Renxiang, which means kind of frightening or scary fragrance. And the story behind that very quickly is that a tea picker, uh, a young female tea picker um, who had picked her, um, was picking this tea and filled up her baskets, had nowhere else to put her leaves. So she put them between her breasts and the heat of her body um, heated up the leaves and this amazing aroma came out which she called a scary aroma or a frightening or quite shocking aroma and so this name was the original name for this tea. When the Emperor Kangxi, the story goes, first tasted this tea, he loved it, he fell in love with it in the Qing Dynasty and it became an imperial tribute tea but he thought that the name Scary Fragrance was a bit unsuitable or, or, or not sophisticated enough for this tea and so he re renamed it Jade Green Snail of Spring or Bilo Chen. So that's the brief history. There's lots of stories about this tea, but I'm not gonna get into that. What I wanna focus on is how you can find the best stuff. Let's quickly scope this tea so we know where we're going with it. Season, it needs to be a spring picked tea, very early spring picked, um, ideally pre Qingming, which means before the 3rd, 4th of April. So ideally before the beginning of April. The cultivar for this varies depending uh, upon the producers, but I think that one of the best cultivars is the original Dongting Kunti, the original variety that comes from Dongting, which is where this uh, tea is famously grown. So origin is Dongting, that's where the best, best uh, Bilo Chen comes from. And, you know, I say this um, uh, with a pinch of salt with a lot of other teas. So, for example, there are some teas that, that are supposed to come from a particular area, but actually tea, similar tea or the same type of tea grown in other areas nearby or even other provinces can be just as good or even sometimes better. But with Bilo Chen, in my experience from tasting tea, Bilo Chen from uh, Taiwan, Bilo Chen from Zhejiang, which is very close by, Bilo Chen from uh, Yunnan even, from various different provinces, I really, really think that Jiangsu, which is the province uh, in China where the best Bilo Chen comes from, and then Dongting is the mountainous region near Taihu Lake. So Jiangsu is the province. Taihu Lake, around Taihu Lake, there's Dongting Mountain. Uh, Dongting Mountain is split into a west side and an east side, and both of them produce high quality Bilo Chen. So that's the origin. Picking, very, very fine uh, picking on this, extremely fine. We're talking about one bud and one leaf, ideally. The finest picking you can get. Um, and the processing of this is this is a pan fried green tea. Um, and in the frying process of this green tea, it has to be done in small quantities. It has to be done so you don't scorch the leaf in any way, so you don't bring out too much burnt notes. A little bit is okay, but not too much of the kind of burnt or smoky notes. Um, and then it's rubbed um, in between the hands. So they'll 
they'll heat it uh, with a pan at high temperature, they'll turn the pan down and then they'll shape it and heat it and they'll rub it between their hands that gives it this beautiful spiraled shape. Um, and then they'll let it rest and then they'll put it um, back on a pan at even lower heat to try to drive out even more moisture. Then they'll usually wrap it up and sometimes they put it over um, limestone to try to, to soak up um, any extra moisture and dry the leaves out as quickly as possible. This is all about capturing the, 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 the essence of springtime. Uh, in the cup. Uh, elevation, elevation varies depending on where it's picked, but Dongting Mountains will be around 700 meters, something like that. So that's your scope. I have in front of me three Bilochens, and I'm going to give you a, a chance to uh, see if you can choose which one you think is the best quality out of these. So there's three here. Obviously, Visuals is only a small part of the tea grading process. And so everything I'm going to say to you now is a good guideline, but isn't, they aren't hard and fast rules. So, you know, there will be um, variations in the looks of any tea and ultimately it all boils down to taste. It all boils down to, you know, your appreciation and whether or not you like it in the cup. However, I'm very conscious of the fact that a lot of you don't get the chance to taste before you buy. Therefore, I'm gonna give you some basic pointers in terms of the visuals. Right, so now I'm gonna to reveal to you the different grades. This one here is the lowest grade tea. And this is from Zhejiang province. So this is a Zhejiang Bilochen. This is the lowest grade. This is a high grade. This is a high grade Bilochen from Jiangsu province. So from the right province, uh, picked at the right time early spring and this is a high-grade Bilochen. This is what I consider to be a super high-grade Bilochen. This is the, the Bilochen that I would be purchasing, and this is the Bilochen that we have um, selling at Mayleaf as green coil. So this is our green coil 2017 Bilochen. Right, let's talk about some various pointers. All right, let's first look at the shape. Shape of this one here um, is a bit thick, the leaves are a bit thick. They're, they're not so fine. They don't have the fineness and the delicacy that you would want. I'll bring this one a bit closer to this camera just to make sure that you are picking up the detail here. So you can see that it's not as fine. Let me pull up the super high quality next to it as this one. This one here is a lot finer the leaves, a lot more delicate the leaves. So that's the first thing you need to look for. The one in between here is kind of in the middle. Um, the, the leaves are, are a little bit finer than this one here, but it's um, still a little bit uh, less than this one here, which is super fine, very, very delicate, very, very, very um, thin leaves. So that's the difference there, shape. Second thing is color. This kind of black brown color is not what you want to see. Black, browns, and yellows really are not part of the Bilochen palette so much. Um, you can see that the um, color of the buds, the fluff here, yes, they are white, but they're, again, a little bit beige, a bit yellowing. This one here, now this one here is really something that I see a lot in uh, tea uh, shops. It's high grade Bilochen, but this reminds me of Jinjun Mei. If you haven't seen our video on Jinjun Mei, um, I'll put a link in the description below. Everyone's obsessed with having a tea which has lots of this fluffy hair, lots and lots of hair, and the fluffier the better because it represents um, early spring tea. And that is true. It certainly is true that when you can see a lot of hair, fluff, uh, a lot of tea fluff like this, that means that it's early picked uh, tea and therefore it's definitely first flush spring tea, which is great. However, in my opinion, when you get tea, which is where, where the predominance and it seems like the focus of the tea producer or the farmer is to pick it at the height of its kind of fluffiness and, and furriness, I think you lose out a little bit on intensity of flavor. I think that the depth starts to go and it starts to be a tea which is produced more for looks and less for taste. Um, don't get me wrong, this is a high grade Bilochen, but I personally don't look for something that has this kind of very light kind of ball of fluff kind of uh, um, look to it. I'll bring this a bit closer again. 
so you can see. And again, I'll compare it next to this one here. So yes, you want to look for um, you want to look for fluff. You want to look for the the hairy um, buds. But I don't think you need to be too obsessed with with having with with looking at looking for a tea which has got this predominance of um, hairs. So that's another thing. Um, so the texture of these are very different, right? So this one here, the fine grade one, the color is a green. It's a deep green, a deep jade green. That's also um, really different to this one here, which again has more of a kind of beigey yellow kind of color and is more uniform. This one here has a kind of two-tone. You can see it's kind of dark green and white. It's a very clear, distinct two-tone effect. This is what I consider to be the really, really good stuff. When you start to see this very clear, very clear um, definition of the leaves, that they are very fine, that they are very thin, that they are very delicate, that they have been very tightly rolled, that you can see so, like high definition, it's very, very clear, the, the definition of the leaves. The color is very distinct between a kind of white, moving to beige slightly, but generally very white and a dark, rich green. This is a bit too beige, a bit too yellow, a bit too furry. And this one clearly here is, you know, too dark, the wrong shape, and is just, uh, um, you can see a world of difference to these two. So I'm gonna put this one aside. And what I want to do is brew both of these up and do a side-by-side -side tasting. So scope of these teas are practically identical. They are all from Jiangsu, both of them from Jiangsu province, both of them from Dongting, um, and both of them are considered high grade tea. So there's no difference in their origin, really obviously different fields, but the production when it was picked and how it's processed is clearly different between the two. So let's give these a brew. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into glass guy ones here. We're gonna heat these up. Now a lot of people when they talk about Bilo Chen, they talk about a fruity, um, fragrance and I, I've seen constantly written that you know the Bilo Chen plants are grown around fruit trees um, which is, is true there, there are fruit trees around and that these this gives a very unique fruity flavor to the to the tea in my experience of tasting a lot of Bilo Chen's that's not what I'm looking for I'm not looking for for fruit floral yes but it's really more about springtime rather than the kind of summer fruits and the, and, and, uh, and yeah, those, because I associate fruits much more with kind of late spring and summer. This is about early spring when everything's starting to go, to, 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 to shoot, when the buds are coming out and everything, the, the, the world is turning green again, right? So we're going to put these in here and now let's give these a smell. And in my experience, you can pretty much tell the quality of a Bilo Chen immediately from its smell. So let's go. Um, weirdly, slightly chocolatey um, and nutty. Nutty, chocolate, a bit of malt. But you're noticing I'm not saying anything that's relating to spring. It's very malty, it's very warming, it's not an unpleasant smell, in fact it's a very nice smell. But I, it's something that I would more associate with the flavour profiles of say uh, a white tea or a very light black tea. Now let's give this one a smell. <sighs> spring grass, freshly cut, spinach, definite vegetal notes like just like lying in springtime maybe you you know lying on the grass and just having a smell of the 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 the, the, the air the grass that very meadowy but not spring not summer meadows very spring very early very raw very verdant just at the beginning of of the kind of cycle of spring yeah it's got um very spinach notes, and also cooked spinach notes. Mmm, a slight, um, uh, there is floral, but the floral, again, it's very light. I would put it down to elderflower, a bit zesty. Nothing sweet, there's no kind of sweet lilies, roses, any orchids, anything like that. It's very, very much 
about youth. It's about being very young and raw. Okay, let's give this a rinse. I am brewing six grams of this in 150 or 180 guy one, 180 mil guy one, 80 degree water. So that's uh, 175 Fahrenheit. So very, very important with this tea, do not, do not brew too hot. I would say 75 to 80 degrees is perfect for this tea. Okay, so give these a rinse. You don't have to rinse these teas, it's not essential. I like to do it just to um, be able to get a smell of those wet leaves. So I'm gonna take these off. Difference is immense on the lid. Let's have a go at this. So it's gotten even darker. I'm smelling roasted chestnuts. Um, yeah, the, the roast is there now. Maybe was a little bit too long on the pan. Chestnuts though, really, really chestnut smell. Um, very nice, very nice smell. I'm getting a little bit of the um, asparagus, so there's a bit more green coming in. As you hydrate, it's gonna start to reveal some of the fresher notes. So yes, there is a bit more green in there. As I said, it's a good quality tea. I can already see the difference of these leaves and I'll show you that in a second. Oh, wow. Um, a little bit of artichoke. Yeah. It reminds me of um, when you go to Greece and you get spinach pies. So spinach pie, spanakopita. It's got that cooked spinach, a little bit of saltiness, like a kind of mineral marine saltiness, but then I could kind of throw that in with the feta cheese, that saltiness, a little bit of butteriness that comes from the phyllo pastry. So spanakopita, it's got, like this one, it's got a little bit of the, of the roast. You can just about pick it up, but it's nothing excessive. It's more like a kind of hot wok. You know, if you, if you heat up a wok, in China, there's something called wok hei, which is the taste of a hot wok. Now take a look at the difference in the quality and the color of the leaves. You can see again, high definition. You can see every single leaf, whereas this is kind of, kind of balled together, clumped up. The leaves are clearly larger than this one here. I hope that this camera is picking it up. So this is a lot larger leaves, a lot more irregular. These are like perfect little, um, coils of green and the color is vibrant. The, the dark green is turning into a, a rich verdant green. The white buds are, 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 are becoming a kind of beautiful kind of white apple green, like the inside of an apple. Very, very, very pretty compared to this one. Okay, let's give these a taste. So we're gonna be brewing for you know me, I don't like stopwatches. We try to do it all by eye. We're gonna brew for about 10 to 15 seconds here. That should do it. So what you want to be looking for in the liquor, that's the next part you want to be looking for a very, very glowing liquor, something that's very iridescent, that has a, has, a, has a real kind of brightness to it. If you start to see something that looks very dull, then you know that it's not such a high quality Bilochen. All right, let me pull this one here, and then we get to tasting. We've got a lot of spring teas, a lot of 2000 teas which have come in recently. Um, so please do check them out. Uh, it's really been um, all about the spring teas now, um, all about the 2017 teas. And for those of you that are saying, hey, it's July, why are your spring teas coming so late? You know what? There was a, in, in the history of tea, the, uh, the first tea to reach the port um, in the UK 
always commanded the highest price. And that's why clipper ships were uh, built and invented to try and speed the tea across the oceans as quickly as possible because the freshest tea always commanded the highest price. And I know that's still the case here. You know, if, if I started to release first flush tea um, around kind of April, I could sell it um, at a very high price. But really, for me, in everything we do, it's all about taking our time to select the best of the spring harvest. Now this tea here was picked on March 27th. So this is pre Qingming, very, very early spring picked tea. So I know it's picked at the right time, but it's taken us time to taste test it against lots of other Bilo Chens in order to choose our winner. And then we have to have it shipped over. I don't like to air freight uh, tea because of um, various reasons, partly because of our environmental. Um, I like to, to try and put it on a ship if possible. It means that my, my prices uh, um, can be kept under control as well. So that's why it's July, but now we're getting all of our 2017 uh, teas. Right, let's take a look at the difference in the color. Let me show you this one and this one, and you can see that they're pretty much identical. Gorgeous kind of citrine, yellow, slightly green, iridescent, fluorescent, fabulous, fabulous color. And again, if you just take a look at these leaves here, you can really notice the difference here between the high definition leaves and the larger clump of leaves here. Right, enough about visuals, it's all about taste. So let's taste, this is the Jiangsu high quality. And this is the Jiangsu super high quality. There is a difference in the color, but it's not a huge difference. Okay, I'm going to start with the high quality tea. Texture, light to medium. I prefer it to be a bit, a little bit more viscous than, than it is. Taste. I get chalk, I get minerality. That's the first thing that I notice. Um, a slight zesty sourness, like lime skin, is coming through. But as I predicted, with the more fluffy teas, there's a lack of depth. It's very delicate, it's a perfectly good green tea. In fact, it's a very good green tea. But it lacks that depth that I look for um, in higher quality tea. I know this is just the first infusion. It will probably express itself a little bit more in further infusions. Yeah, a good tea. I'm not picking up too many of the spring notes, kind of lime zest and minerality. Let's go for the super high quality. Thickness, much thicker, oh, much thicker, uh, medium, I would say, medium thickness. Okay, the taste, well, first of all, the depth is just so much more, the fragrance is so much more. You know, when you taste a tea and immediately when you breathe out through your nose, you're getting so much richness and complexity through the nose. It's, it's very fulfilling, it's a very rich tea. Let's try and break some of those flavors down. So there is minerality, there's a, there's, a, there's a slatiness rather than chalkiness. There's buttered spinach, artichokes, asparagus. Less of the grass, more of the vegetables. It's kind of got a brothiness to it. I would say it's also got some um, distinct umami notes to it as well. So the Japanese teams, uh, Japanese teas which are very famous for developing that umami, especially by shade growing them. I would say if you like Japanese green teas, then this is a great one to jump across, across the ocean into China. Really got that distinct umami nature, not as strong as a gyokuro, not as strong as a, as a shade grown um, Japanese green tea, but definitely there. Almost uh, brothy like a soup, it's kind of got a slight kind of, um, the savoriness almost moves into kind of chicken soup kind of um, flavors. And I know that that's probably not necessarily a flavor note that you would expect or something that you maybe desire, but it's a really enjoyable because when you get that kind of savory umami taste, you know that it's gonna convert to sweetness. That's the beauty of umami, it's that savory sweet. It's that very delicious flavor, which makes Asian food so good. 
In terms of flowers, I'm picking up elderflower, and that tends to be the flower that I notice the most whenever we uh, taste test Bilochen, this very kind of bright, zesty elderflower. I don't think there's any citrus notes. I don't think there's any fruit notes. I don't know why people keep talking about fruit uh, in regards Bilochen. It's one of those things that maybe is kind of um, repeated along the way that they're always talking about the fruit trees and the fruit notes. I don't get a lot of fruit from Bilochen. There's a starchiness, there's a sweetness there. Um, I wouldn't say it's a potatoiness. I would say it's again lighter, brighter, a little bit sharper than kind of a, a rounded potato starchiness, maybe kind of art, uh, a Jerusalem artichoke. Give it another taste. Yeah, so buttered spinach, asparagus, brothy, umami, elderflower, delightful through the nose. It's definitely there, much more complex. And the texture on my mouth is dry to cooling. So it's a kind of dry sensation, which is kind of cooling a little bit minty. Okay, let's do one more infusion. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna intentionally infuse them <clears throat> a bit harder. So we're gonna brew maybe 20 seconds for both of them. Again, 80 degree water. Now you can brew this tea grandpa style. A lot of people um, like to brew this tea grand grandpa style. Um, and if it's good quality Bilo Chen, then you can. If it's poor quality Bilo Chen, you will pick up bitter notes. So that's another way that you can spot whether or not it's high quality or not. So for those of you who don't know what grandpa style is, I've done a video about grandpa style. I will put a link of that video in the description below so you can check it out. Okay, so here we go. Second infusion. The amount of infusions that this will give you, this will give you, these teas will give you good five infusions, um, possibly more, but certainly a good five, if it's a high quality tea. And it will change, the flavor will change as you go through those infusions. We're not gonna do all of them here, you'll be happy to hear. But I'm just gonna do one more infusion. Let's quickly take a look at the color, see if there's any difference. I would say it's again, very, very similar. Beautiful, beautiful, very, very vibrant green color. There you go. Let's give it a taste. Oh, I'm getting more of those chocolate notes coming through now. Chocolate, hay. It's funny, isn't it? Because that tea looked really, really early spring, and it was, or is, um, picked early spring. And, you know, it had so much in terms of its uh, furriness and, and all of the hallmarks that you look for for very early first flush tea and yet it tastes I'm getting the dryness, but I'm not getting the depth. I'm getting very little of that kind of verdant vegetal taste. It's not a satisfying tea and this is high quality and this would be very expensive. In fact, the price differences between these two are not so much compared to the taste. And this is what I mean about the elusiveness of green coil or Bilo Chen, is that, you know, even if you get high quality, it's, you know, what, once you've tasted a really good Bilo Chen, it's very hard to find it again. And um, that's one of the reasons for those people who um, have purchased B, uh, Bilo Chen from us many moons ago. We haven't had green coil or Bilo Chen for about two years because I have not managed to find one at the right price. I can find them, but then, you know, the farmers know when they've got the super good stuff and they can sometimes, um, yeah, they can sometimes mess around a little bit too much with pricing. Oh, elderflowers coming through. The bitterness is there, but it's a beautiful, quick arrival, moves to dryness, and then goes cooling and juicy. Wow. So much more flavor, 
so much more intensity, so much more richness. Take a look at the leaves one last time. I'll show them to this camera here. You can start to train your eyes. Look at the high definition, very, very thin leaves here. Extreme, I'll bring it really close to you so you can see. Really, really, really fine leaves. Very, very fine, beautiful. And then look at these ones and how they've just opened up and they've kind of lost their shape already. They're just kind of a bit flaccid, a bit, you know, too open and more irregular in shape, okay? So this is what I mean. Don't be fooled by just going for the very fluffy teas. It doesn't necessarily mean it's super high quality. So I hope that this has helped you. Um, and when you go searching for Bilo Chen, make sure that you use all of this information because otherwise it's very likely that you'll pay top dollar for a pretty substandard tea. But when you find the good stuff, it is a wonderful, wonderful tea, worthy of its reputation. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don May from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.